Welcome to our video series, Taking Control of Your Child's Diabetes. My name is Lisette. I will review with you how to monitor your child's blood sugar. The glucose or sugar in your child's blood must be checked throughout the day and at bedtime. The blood sugar is checked by using a blood glucose monitor and performing a finger stick. You need to check your child's blood sugar every day, right before each meal and at bedtime. Keep in mind that it is very important to check blood glucose levels before bedtime because this is the longest period in the day your child will go without eating. Checking blood sugar at bedtime will help you determine if your child needs a snack before going to sleep. Doing this will avoid a drop in blood sugar during the night, which can be very dangerous. Bedtime blood sugar levels need different care than the blood sugar levels of a child during the day. This is because the child will be going to sleep and will go the longest period of time without eating. As we said, it is very important to prevent the blood sugar from dropping during the night. It is also important to understand that the bedtime blood sugar should be taken a minimum of three hours after the last rapid acting insulin dose was given with dinner and it is not related to whether the child is going to sleep or not. If the bedtime blood sugar is taken before a minimum of three hours have passed since the rapid acting insulin dose was given with dinner, it will lead to an inaccurate reading. An inaccurate reading can result in giving too much insulin or too little if it is needed. Here's a table showing target blood sugars for bedtime. The table shows what blood sugars are too low and need a snack and which blood sugars are too high and need insulin according to the child's age. Any snack given according to this table does not require insulin unless more carbohydrates than what was recommended was consumed. After discharge from the hospital, it is recommended that a blood sugar reading after bedtime is taken between 3 and 4 a.m. for the first three to four days after discharge from the hospital. And any time that there is a change in your child's long-acting insulin or if there has been increased physical activity in the late afternoon or evening hours. Meals and bedtime aren't the only times blood sugars are checked. Blood sugars should be checked if your child feels or looks sick. It is also important to check blood sugars before your child exercises or participates in sports. Quick tip. A free food snack is when your carb count calculation results in 0.4 or less, which means your child does not need insulin. If the carb count results in more than 0.4, the food is not a free food snack and the child does need insulin unless the snack is given before physical activity or at bedtime with a blood sugar level within or below the recommended bedtime range. As far as blood glucose level, you may ask what is too high and what is too low. A safe blood glucose level depends on many factors. Your doctor will determine a safe range for your child. It is important to keep track of your child's blood sugar. Logging your child's blood sugar numbers regularly in a logbook will help the endocrinologist determine if the current insulin dose is appropriate for your child. After dealing with your child's diabetes for a while, logging his or her blood sugar numbers will help you and your doctor identify patterns. The goal is for your child to learn over time how to manage his or her own diabetes. Next, let's learn about hemoglobin A1C. What is it? Hemoglobin A1C is a blood test that tells us the average blood sugar levels over the last three months. According to the American Diabetes Association, all children younger than 18 years should strive to have a hemoglobin A1C of less than 7.5%. Your doctor will order this test periodically to monitor your child's blood sugars over time. 
Now we are going to demonstrate how to check your child's blood sugar. First, you're going to wash your and your child's hands. In the hospital setting, we wear gloves, but it is not needed at home. Next, you're going to gather the supplies that you need. You're going to need your glucometer, your Lancet device, your Lancet needle, alcohol in case you're in a public place and you cannot wash your hands, gauze, and test strips. To set up your Lancet device, you're going to remove the top of it. Take your Lancet needle and insert it into your Lancet device. You might hear it click when you do this. Twist the top of your needle off and pull up and then carefully cap your needle on your Lancet device. Your Lancet device has more than one button. Usually the only push button is the one that you use to launch your needle when you're ready for your test. There's another button that's usually a sliding button or a pullback mechanism and that is to load your needle. In other words, get your needle in the right position for the test. This Lancet has a slider button. Now it's ready. Lastly, Lancets have dials with numbers. Sometimes it's in the back or at the front and it rotates this way. The smaller the number on your dial, the less deep your needle stick is. The larger the number on your dial, the more deep your needle stick is. Now your Lancet device is ready. Next, get your glucometer ready by grabbing your test strips, removing one, and loading it onto your glucometer. This will make your glucometer turn on. Once it shows a drop, it means it is ready to receive the blood sample. Now you are ready to clean your child's finger and if able, please allow your child to choose the finger where they would like their test done. Scrub the finger on the side as the sides have less nerve endings and are therefore less painful. Now you can get your Lancet device, place it on the child on the side of your child's finger and press the button. You're going to wipe away the first drop and use the second drop by applying pressure to your child's finger. Next, grab your test strip that's inserted into your glucometer and tap the drop of blood and it will suck it right up. In a few seconds, you will have a test result displayed. Now it's time to dispose of your Lancet needle. Grab your Lancet device, remove the top, to expose your used Lancet needle. All of your Lancet needles come with a cap that you removed originally to cover it once you're going to remove it. This Lancet model has a slider button to release the needle for disposal. Other models may not have this feature. Please be sure to look at your instruction manual on how to remove your used Lancet needle. Place your used needle in a sharps container or at home you can also use an empty laundry detergent bottle. 
any container that is of color, thick, and with a lid that you can secure may be used as your sharps container. Once your sharps container is two thirds full maximum, you can tape the lid and label it on the outside, do not recycle and dispose of it in your regular trash bin. So now you know about monitoring blood sugar. Remember, we are here for your child and to support you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact your diabetes team. Please continue watching this video series to learn more.